Mm. And welcome back to Otaku No Video, as always. Thank you very much for joining me. Where today I'm digging deeper into the Studio Ghibli film From Up on Poppy Hill, an adaptation of a manga and directed by Goro Miyazaki, Hayao Miyazaki's son. This video will contain spoilers for Poppy Hill, so if you don't want to know what happens, stop watching now. Let's begin with some of the themes of Poppy Hill, beginning with Japan's economic growth during the 60s, as typified by Yokohama. Of course, Japan's cities have always been bustling, that goes back for centuries, but Yokohama is filled with the old and the new, Buses and bicycles, kimonos and business suits. Perhaps more interestingly, it all flows. Yokohama is not a city struggling with modernity, it is successfully modernizing. And that's what contrasts Japan of the 60s with, say, Japan of the 50s, where Japan was really struggling to integrate all of this modern technology. By 60, those engines were firing on all cylinders, and it was clear Japan was moving forward at a very rapid pace. Another theme of the film is youthful resistance to authoritarian decisions. And this is started with the big splash at the beginning of the film, of course, but more on that in a second. Throughout the film, Shun and his friends fight back against authoritarian decisions, but they don't attack directly or personally. Instead, Shun and his friends look for real solutions, ways of proving that the old building is actually useful to the student body. This is important because of how the film is nostalgic about the time. It is setting up these students as heroes, as people who are looking for real solutions to the problems of their age. Let's talk about some of the major moments of the film, beginning with that big splash at the beginning. It's remarkable for a few reasons. One, it is physically dangerous. Two, it's quite embarrassing for everyone involved. And three, it causes a lot of attention without causing any damage to the school. In other words, it's a form of peaceful protest. And this goes back to that earlier point about how the film romanticizes these kids and these teenagers and sets them up as heroes. It's very important that the film establishes the fact that the characters are willing to do things that are big and bold and embarrassing, but that they're not going to fire a gun. Let's move on to the cleaning of the school building. Ghibli's animators are almost showing off here with all these dozens of characters weaving amongst each other. This is very difficult to animate, but beyond just showing off, this scene illustrates uh, an important element of the film, wa, or social unity. The students are all coming together for a common goal. Now they already do this in school, technically, but this is a secondary, for some of them primary, but a whole nother common thing for them to do. Add the celebratory, joyous nature of the scene, and you realize this whole sequence is about the joy of working together, the joy of common work, a pretty Asian concept. Later on, that near riot during the school assembly also illustrates this, but in a very different way. Those students may be arguing, but it's just a couple of students trying to sway the whole group. Moreover, all the students are united in keeping this a secret from the faculty. Later on, going to see the school's president demonstrates a degree of difference between the students and the adults. Think about it. Several teenagers traveling to a different city to try to convince an adult to change his mind. Now, they're polite, of course, but the fact they even consider this a possibility is quite surprising. Which goes back again to the nostalgia of the film. This film is celebrating these teenagers who are trying to change the world. Let's move on to the final scene of the film, which builds up to that moment of high tension and release. What's interesting about this sequence is that both Umi and Shun partly define themselves by their relation to their parents, particularly their fathers. I think it's neat how the story intertwines the story of these two characters' fathers. Some have complained about the abruptness of the ending, but I think it works. I mean, what else do we need to learn? What more could we see of these characters that would tell us that we don't already know? Let's rewind and look at that particular subplot, particularly the fact that they're siblings. It's interesting that Shun completely closes himself off to Umi once he learns that they are siblings. This is a shoujo trope, but it's also realistic. 
I got the sense that Shun was so hurt by the fact that he could not pursue Umi in a sort of a dating context that even seeing her at all was just too painful. Is this immature? Sure, they're teenagers, they're not fully mature yet. And then we discover they're not really siblings. Of course, this is a shoujo trope as well. I actually think it would have been interesting if they really were siblings and decided to pursue a close brother and sister relationship. Siblings can certainly be close and not in a creepy way, and I think it would have been cool for them to become bro and sis. Instead, we get the romantic satisfaction of knowing that they can pursue a lovey-dovey relationship. Oh well. As I mentioned in my review, both Umi and Shun are not typical anime heroes. They are quite reserved young people. Umi seems completely content with her industrious life, and Shun focuses on the school newspaper. And both are attracted to each other by each other's quiet drive. Umi respects Shun's quiet uh, intensity, while Shun appears to respect Umi's quiet dedication to the boarding house. Wow. I do want to mention the film's use of flashbacks, which are often considered a bit of a storytelling cheat. However, the past winds all the way through Poppy Hill's story, starting from the very beginning of the film when Umi comes downstairs and passes by her father's portrait. We want to know what happened in these characters' pasts because th that's been woven into the story, which is far better than sitting there while the characters tell us what happened anyway. Of course, there's more to be analyzed by Poppy Hill if you wanted to go into it, if you do, please feel free to leave a comment below. Otherwise, hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching.